Boom, shaka laka, guys. Welcome to the Power Within, our Tuesday night call. This call is completely open to anybody in the world, um, anybody that you know just wants to or, or just desire to grow and to develop and really achieve different goals, guys. Uh, our goal is just to help everybody just feel a little better, right? Just feel a little better. Y'all drop in the chat box better, right? Our goal is for us to just to feel better day in and day out, all right? Um, but uh, I won't be before you long. My name is Brittany Burrell. I go by B Burrell. And um, I'm one of the uh, uh, leaders here inside Generational Wealth, which is uh, the founding organization behind this call. But again, this call is open to anybody, everybody, because um, that's what our goal is, is to reach the, reach the globe. Uh, but I want you guys to understand that you are good enough for whatever goals that you're desiring. Um, you know, we often speak about faith and belief. We often speak about being able to understand how your mind works, understanding the power of your subconscious mind. But I want you guys just to simply understand on tonight that you are good enough because oftentimes when we're speaking to ourselves, we're speaking so down to ourselves. And I don't think people realize how they actually speak to themselves. You may be just speaking silently and just talking, thinking to yourself, talking to yourself. And so uh, I think I've mentioned this before to for us to really analyze how we're speaking to ourselves and what we're saying, because um, no matter how, what type of goal it is, we categorize goals as a big goal, as a small goal, but I feel like if you just develop the habits and you have this firm desire to really get it done, guys, it, it doesn't matter about the perspective of big or small, it's all about developing those habits to make sure you achieve it, right? Does anybody have any goals on the call tonight? Yes or no in the chat box? Do you guys have any goals on tonight? Yes or no in the chat box, right? Okay, good, good. And so the next thing you want to identify is if you have those goals, you want to be able to analyze the level of your desire towards those goals. Because some of us have, anybody got a goal to, to be in the best shape of your life? Y'all drop some goals in the chat box for me. You may have a goal to be in the best shape of your life. You may have a goal to be financially uh, uh, free. You may have a goal to be a better communicator, to get a new degree, to get a new job. Somebody got a, somebody said a, a new car, right? We have so many different variety of goals, right? And they can reflect in different areas of our life, right? But I want you guys to not just have a goal, but I want you guys to make sure you understand the key word desire, all right? Having a goal and having a desire is two totally different things, okay? So a lot of times we look at goal as the object of uh, the, the, end, the end point, the object of from our ambition, the object um, of a person's ambition or effort. It's an aim, all right? It's a desired result. I'm so glad that's the definition. It's a desired result. It is the object of a person's ambition or effort. It is an aim. So we aim to have the new car. We aim to have the new business, to be a better communicator, get the new degree, lose the weight. That's our aim. But if you take that aim and go a step back, and there's, there's two things that come before that. There's a couple of things that have to take place before you do the aim, which is I first have to have a desire. And so in comparison from goal to desire, People don't realize just because you have a goal doesn't mean you have a desire for the goal. Does that make sense, family? Yes or no in the chat box. Just because you have a goal does not necessarily mean you have a desire for the goal. OK, so I have learned that from speaking to people who want different develop new trades to develop new skill sets. They'll tell me, hey, I want to learn this or I want to achieve this and I want to have that. For me personally, I was killing it, killing it last up until March 9th with my fitness. Then I allow my lack of planning, my lack of organizing. And guess what? My desire started declining because I had built up such a strong desire. I had built up a routine. I had habits. But then I let my life start getting a little scattered. So I stopped prioritizing my fitness. And so now I got to do it again, right? But I'm going to keep going until I get it right. So that's the thing about it. At the end of the day, I want you guys to understand that you're good enough, okay? So don't beat yourself up when you fall short of what you really wanted to, to, to do, all right? Or those habits that you really wanted to stick with you, okay? So understand the difference between having a goal and having a desire, 
Just because it's a goal does not mean it's a desire. A lot of people want to make more money. Guess what? It's not a strong desire because what they don't do is update their resume. What they don't do is put in those applications. What they don't do is go to this is uh, add more um, value to their skill sets. So it's going to take for you to become more valuable for you to even uh, to, to set. Uh, it's going to become for you to become more valuable for some of these goals to be achieved. All right. So just because you want to make more money doesn't mean it's a desire. Just because you want to be fine like wine doesn't mean it's a desire. A goal does not necessarily mean it's backed by desire. It's just an aim. So please understand the difference. Desire means a strong wish, a strong, uh, strong desire, a strong aim, a strong desire for something. Right. Um, if you guys have ever had an emergency in your life, you flew to get to where you needed to go, you 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 were there at the drop of a dime. That's your high. That's what I call like the highest peak of desire. Now, what if you can take that level of desire and that level of focus and then sit it toward, uh, sit it in the seat of your soul and sit it in these places where you truly want to go? Right? You you get so many things done. Right? I think we all get way more things done if our level of desire was increased. One thing I have realized: you you want to be able to analyze your ability to think as well. So for instance, if I'm, uh, uh, you know, since being an entrepreneur and being self-employed, um, there will be times where being able to create my income doesn't require labor at all. And so I was confusing motion for, I was confusing, excuse me, uh, uh, motion for progression. And what I'm saying is I have gotten to a new level of income where it doesn't require motion for me to create income. And so when I wasn't moving, I felt like I wasn't achieving. I hope this makes sense. I felt like I wasn't getting things done. I felt like, man, I need, I need something to happen in my life. But that was just a next, another level of, wow, I, this is what they say, being on the right side of money. So I want you guys to understand that being, being in motion doesn't necessarily mean progression, okay? And not being in emotion can also mean progression. I hope y'all catching this. All right. I'm going to say it again. When you are in motion doesn't necessarily mean progression. OK. Also, you cannot be in motion physically and still have progression because now you start to think better. You start to think in different ways. You start to think about how to move smarter, how to allow this different areas of your life to work for you. Right. So the thing you guys want to understand is when you feel like you're not having a strong. So this is something I practice. I have to feel a strong desire. The reason I am completely aware, I have seen what desire has done for me in my life. The minute I have a strong desire for something, I'm completely locked in. I shut the world out. I don't see nothing. I don't hear nothing else. I am completely focused. So I know what desire has done for me. For instance, when my grandmother was transitioning, uh, we I just got off a cruise. They called me and said, Grandma is in hospice. And I got in my car when I hit Atlanta and I drove probably 100 miles an hour to where she was. And um, that's a strong desire. Do you guys agree? Yes or no? All right. That's a strong desire to get somewhere. My foot is on the gas. I don't care who in my way. I got to get to this place. Right. Have you ever had a strong desire in your life? Have y'all ever had those moments? Yes or no in the chat box. Have you ever had that moment where you just by all means necessary, you got to get somewhere. I got to get here. And it may not be somewhere you're driving. It may be a promotion on the job. It may be uh, hell, some of your favorite food, right? You, you, you have this craving. See, that's what you want to be able to analyze. Am I in a place right now? Is my desire as is, is my desire at a level of an emergency ambition? I'm going to say that word. Do I have an emergency type ambition? Do I have a strong ambition, right? You have to understand, guys, if you don't have that level of desire happening in your life, you got to take a step back and figure out what can trigger that to happen. And you have to make sure you're not just going through the motions and doing just doing things just because they fell in your lap. All right. I tell people all the time, there are many people who don't really enjoy their careers. So I tell people this. Leverage your career to take care of your cost of living. And when you get out of that, when you leave, when you get home or whatever it is that you're doing, clock into that true desire. You should be excited every single day to figure out what that is that brings light and joy. A lot of us box ourselves in and we get confined 
to the stigma on the world, which is I got to do things that make me money and not do things that make me happy. You can do both. All right. You leverage what, what brings in income and you save enough and you invest enough and you, you move your money around to within two, four, five, 10 years, you can literally transition out of what you don't truly have a passion for. All right. So what is my level of desire on today is what you guys have to understand. There will be moments in your life when you feel um, uh, tested, you will feel burnt out, you will feel grief. You will feel exhausted. You will feel tired. If anybody felt overworked and, and just, and not necessarily in your workspace, you may just feel burnt out from dealing with your family, dealing with your friends. It's just exhausted all the time, right? You're that person. You're that person that people can depend on. A lot of times we can say yes so much, guys, that we forget that we're still a human being as well. You also have to hold people accountable for where they are in their life. You can't stifle people because they're always calling on you for help. Yes, be a shoulder that people can lean on, but also hold people accountable for their responsibilities and for where they want to go in life, all right? Because what you don't want to do is that you have these goals and these dreams and you got them sitting on the shelf because you're babysitting every single person that you're encountering. You have to understand when to say no. You have to understand when to take care of yourself. You have to understand when to be, I don't want to use the word selfish because you got to make sure you're taking care of yourself. Right. So a lot of times our goals can be neglected because we're prioritizing other people's needs over ours. But when have you asked that person to prior to prioritize their own needs for themselves? Right. Prioritize your own needs for yourself. You need to have an aim. You need to have a desire. Because if you're always fixing people's problems temporarily, if you're the band-aid that people can call on all the time, then that problem in their life can never be healed. Okay, I'm going to say it again. If you are the band-aid for people's needs, then that wound, that issue, that challenge, that concern that they're always facing, but they can call you at the drop of a dime because they know you're going to fix it. Well, you're going to be stifling them and they'll never get to where they need to go. And that area never heals, that never that area never grows because you're constantly putting a Band-Aid on their issues and their concerns, all right? So you have to have a longing for what it is that you want. And you also have to eliminate time, all right? God said, I will supply all your needs in every point of space and every moment of time. And we don't spend enough time really, really meditating on that thought. When was the last time you meditated on your thoughts? When was the last time you did an analysis on yourself? And if you don't feel like you even know what to look for, Ask somebody. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to allow somebody to pour into your life and make sure you ask people who are who got some sense. Right. Don't just go ask anybody and they don't have no sense. I always tell people, look up, look for the mentor, look at a mentor, look at somebody that you're willing to trade lifestyles with or mindsets with or financial responsibilities with. Right. You want to be able to vet that this person is qualified to even pour or speak into your life because you got to be careful not to just let anybody talk to you. So the difference between goals and the difference in between desire. So we all understand. If y'all got it, drop some ones in the chat box. If we fully understand that just because I have a goal doesn't make it a desire. All right. I have a goal to clean my kitchen tonight. That don't mean I desire to do it. Okay. I have a goal to go to the gym in the morning. It doesn't mean I desire to do it. So a goal, <laughs> a goal and desire, you got to learn how to marry the two. Okay. You got to learn how to marry the two. And when you do that, that's when miracles begin to happen. All right. It, it's when it's combined uh, and it's fit together. That's when miracles begin to happen. I always tell people the same thing with prayer. People have two way prayers a lot because what you're saying, Hey B, I want to be, uh, I don't know. I want to get a promotion on my job this year. So that may be something you speak but then you contradict what you're speaking. You contradict what you're praying for because in your heart, the things that I can't hear, the things that we can't hear you say is, is doubt, is fear, is limiting thoughts. It's these things that you're speaking to yourself and you are telling yourself that allows you to say you don't even fit the part. You don't even qualify. So you may desire this promotion, but the outlook you have on yourself, the identity, the image, the mirror, the reflection that you have on yourself you're telling yourself things otherwise. A lot of times it's not the external world. It's not what people are saying that allows us to feel less than. It's two things. It's what you're saying to yourself when it's quiet 
It's what you're saying to yourself when you go into bed at night. It's what you're saying to yourself throughout the day that you don't even know what you're saying because we have over 70,000 thoughts a day, guys. And you can be saying stuff to yourself and, and it's so negative and you don't even realize it because your mind is just constantly going. So you got to get in tune with you. You got to slow yourself down. You got to pause. You got to think, you know, and get in talk and, and, and start saying, what do I say to myself all day? That's something you guys want to write down. What, what do I say to myself every day? How do I speak to myself every day? There's conversations I'll have with people as well. And I feel sad for them because I'm like, man, I would, I would never say that about myself. Right? I would never have that perspective about myself. I think most people that I do speak to speak so negative about themselves. They have no belief. They have no faith. You know, just because you say you have faith doesn't mean you desire to, to use it. <laughs> All right. Just because you say you have faith doesn't mean you even use it. You can everybody can say that. Right. But faith is evident. Faith is fearless. Faith is leaning into the own. None. Faith is is proven to work. Right. So you guys have to understand that. What do I think about? What am I speaking to myself? I got to marry the desire and the goal so I can get to where did I want to go? Because goals are not going to get you anywhere if it's not backed by desire, guys. OK, I have a strong desire right now to master this instrument on my left and I, I'm studying it every day. That's a strong desire. All right. I can tell you what's not a strong desire. Me going to the gym. It's not a strong desire. It's a conscious thought. I have to talk to my y'all ever had things you need to do. And you sit there, and have a whole conversation with yourself to validate why you don't feel like doing it. <laughs> right. You're like, man, maybe I can do it tomorrow. Maybe I can push it tomorrow. Um, it's not really that important today. Y'all ever had those type of conversations with yourself? You know you need to get this task done. And you just try to find every excuse in the world to talk to yourself as to why I'm going to put it off. Yes or no in the chat box. Have y'all put some things off before? All right. A lot of us do it all the time. Right. It's OK. <laughs> it's OK. All right. We, we, we sit there looking crazy, man. I don't know. I know I need to take, I know I need to clean these dishes. I know I need to do this homework. I know I need to get the oil changed. I know I get these ties done. I know I need to do this. I need to do that, right? I need to call her back or et cetera, et cetera, right? There's so many things. And I want you guys to be careful of to what you do put off because procrastination is not a moment, okay? Please hear this. Procrastination is not a moment. Procrastination is an identity, okay? Procrastination can become an identity because what happens is that one time you decide to put something off and it becomes a habit of putting things off, that's why it's hard for you to stick your goals and dreams out because the small things that require a commitment, you have learned and trained yourself to put it off. We had a little self-talk. I don't really feel like doing this. Uh, I'm going to do that tomorrow, right? And so the cleaning the dishes, uh, cleaning the house, uh, maybe just making a phone call, scheduling you a doctor's appointment, getting some maintenance done on your car, just those type of things on a day-to-day -day basis, folding the laundry, right? Vacuuming the carpet, checking the mail, those things, guys, we can procrastinate about. And then we accumulate so many little things that now when it comes to the medium goals, the bigger goals that require a little bit more effort, more commitment, we have trained ourselves to what? Procrastinate. <laughs> folding clothes, washing. Laundry, right? I got some people who hate doing laundry, right? My mama loved doing laundry. She would fold and close as soon as they come out the dryer. All right. So we have to also identify what behaviors, what um, tasks require, what, excuse me, what tasks um, do we have a conversation about, right? That we, we, we hesitate to do. What tasks allow us to procrastinate? And so if you can identify those tasks, guys, then you can begin to find a different mythology as to how to execute them so you don't nurture the habit of procrastination, putting off the laundry, not getting the oil change. Uh, uh, even this, somebody say, I want to start being on time to work, but you have conditioned yourself to always be late. And you truly want to be on time, right? But for some reason, you hit the same clock, same time every day. You even get up early and still be late. And I'm, I'm talking to myself. I've been there before, right? You get up an hour early, you up on time, and you still be there late because you have identified yourself as a late person. So now when you guys see areas in your life that require you to be the best, just 
Guys, everything. I want you to practice excellence in everything. I'm talking to myself as well. We got to practice excellence. All right. Waking up in the morning and making the bed. All right. I told my mom I want to be like you one day because I ain't never seen nobody just make their bed every single day. And now I do that. I make my bed to do it. Right. <laughs> All right. I have no desire to be at work. Right. So but that's the thing. We have to identify these triggers. I'm a prime example. I think most of us don't have no desire to go to work. But what happens is the desire not to go to work should not negate the ability to be on time because you want to separate the two. All right. I may not want to go to work, but I want to be a person with an identity that I am prompt. I am on time and I respect other people's time. So you got to separate the two because Lord knows I never want to go to work. All right. So we got to understand that these things are conditioning who we are as a person. All right. Whether we, and it's not on purpose, being late to work all the time is, you know, you don't want to go to work. But you also have to understand the consequence of, consequence of what happens with saying, I don't want to go to work, which is let me be on time still, even though I don't really want to be at this workspace. Right. And then I will tell that person, well, find somewhere you would like to work. Find somewhere that would make you excited. Find somewhere that brings out the desire. And if you find that any place that you work just doesn't do it for you, then now the, the part two is save, invest, have a two to five year plan. You pay off all your debt. You save up six to 12 months of your lifestyle. You find some type of avenue of passive income that can come in to where your passive is two to four times your income. I mean, your cost of living. And so now you can make that transition out of there. See, if it doesn't satisfy you, then find a plan. All right. Get a way out. All right. So procrastination is an action of delay and postponing. This is why, especially in America, I don't get me wrong. I love, you know, in my country. But guys, America is so far behind. It's probably the laziest country I've seen because with with uh, with Americans, we, we do have a lot of access to a lot of resources. But what I've also realized is that people are being uh, people are babysit for such a long time in their lives. We, we, we nurture our kids way past. We don't teach people responsibility. We don't teach people patience. We don't teach them a lot of the things that will help them endure as a thriving adult, right? And so you babysit people up in their, in their 40s and 50s. I mean, you still got parents 70 years old taking care of their kids, right? Why? Because there's so many areas that have been delayed, that have been postponed. Procrastinating, um, right, we raise kids and not adults pretty much. So you want to identify what things do I procrastinate about? And let me break the habit of procrastination because what you don't want to do is that the oil change, the cleaning out the refrigerator, the laundry, the dishes, the vacuuming, whatever. Those things that you think are small in your life that don't serve no purpose, the things that you think don't matter, if you, if you delay it, it may not matter in that moment of time, but it's going to matter for you as you're seeking these goals and these dreams because you've trained yourself from all these different tasks to put them off, put them off, put them off. And so now that these different tasks, whether you desire them or not, have been put off, now you have created your mind. You've trained your mind. Just like we had to write our ABCs over and over again to learn how to know the ABCs. Somebody had to call your name 50 million times for you to realize that that's what your name was. All right. So all of these things have created an identity. They have created a habit. They've created a routine. You don't have to think about it no more. So I want you to understand in the process of you seeking your goals and your dreams, please be careful and understand in your custom customized thinking pattern that you may have subliminally, unconsciously, without knowing, you have trained yourself to put things off even when they matter. OK, and that's why so many people suffer. And, and, and get discouraged in their goals because they don't even realize that they gave up, that they put it off. They don't have the just perspective of just getting it done, right? So we have to be careful with procrastination and, and try to work on eliminating that out of our lives. It can't be a part of our identity. So just look at the areas that you want to work on. Be the best version of yourself, right? As Kanye says, we just, we're all human race. We're all just one race and we're just passing through time. And just do what you can to live a fulfilled life, okay? You don't need to walk on eggshells. No need to be fearful. No, listen, I'm very, you know, I don't want to shake nobody and scare nobody on tonight, but I'm very mature in speaking about 
uh, death. I'm very mature speaking about that conversation. Do you have your will in order? Do you have your notary? Is, is it notarized? Do you have $10,000 for a burial? Like these different things. Do you have that in order? But guess what? So many people procrastinate on those type of things, on those type of conversation. And guess what? There's a ripple effect for procrastination. There's a price that you have to pay for procrastination. People do go fund these. People are trying to raise money. If you would have just saved money all your life, if you would have just did this or paid $20 a month, $10 a month, for life insurance, so many different things, guess what? You wouldn't have to pay the price on um, later on. So understand procrastination comes with a price, okay? Not pursuing your goals are gonna come with a price. You're gonna live an unfulfilled life. You may get up in age and you're just like, man. You know, some people reach around like 50 years old and they just give up. I'm like, bro, you got so much life to live, so much to do. What's his name? Anthony Hopkins was at the, at the Oscars. He's 87 years old. He just did a movie like last year. He's walking on stage, 87 years old, right? So you have, we have so much life to live. And I, and I want you guys, my final point is I want you guys to understand that you are good enough. Somebody drop in the chat box that I am good enough. All right, say that to yourself in the chat box. I am good enough, right? I am good enough. And you want to speak that all the time. I am good enough for myself. I am good for every single thing. I'm good to live a fulfilled life. I am good enough to get every single thing done. All right. You have everything that it takes, family. Don't count. Uh, I wrote this on, uh, I think it's Facebook. Well, actually, both of them, Instagram and Facebook today. We get too busy occupying our thoughts with what we didn't do or how we got it wrong. We're our biggest critic. We occupy our thoughts with the most negative and discouraging language. And we say, man, I can't believe it's been five years. Man, I can't believe it's been 10 years. Man, I can't believe it's been six months, right? And I still haven't done this or I'm not where I wanna be. You have to master your thinking, guys. I'm telling you, this is gonna change your life forever. You won't even have, when you really understand how, you, how your mind works, right? When you really understand how your mind works, when you really understand how you affect your like actual brain pattern, the material in your mind, your brain, not the mind, but the brain, um, you'll literally just have so much peace and, and be able to thrive even more. You'll be fearless. You'll just be um, very ambitious. You believe that all things are possible, literally. Um, when you get your spiritual development, all these things happen, guys, but understand that you're good enough because somebody else has done what you've already wanted to do. And if they haven't, if you haven't seen anybody do it, guess what? Be the first, all right? But don't be the last, pass it on. Show other people your gifts, show other people your talents. And gifts and talents, guys, ain't just music and art and painting. It, that ain't it, being an athlete and being an actress. No, your gift can be just simply giving out the best hugs. Your gift can be simply going out in the neighborhood and just saying, hey, uh, an active listener, absolutely. Your gift can be so many different things, right? So don't put a label on your gift. Your gift is not generic. Your gift is not um, a brand, all right? It's, I mean, when I say a brand, it doesn't have to be um, trying to push for these different labels and designers. Your gift is just simply how you use your love, all right? It's how do you love people? That's what your gift is always gonna be. How do you have true expression, okay? You can be running a company, that could be your gift, all right? You can be great at just greeting people. I used to say being a great uh, active listener, that can be your gift, okay? And um, just truly understanding it, okay? Um, one last thing I wanna close out with is, is understanding, um, no, nah, you know what? I'm gonna say that for next week. I'm gonna say that for next week. I'm gonna make a continuation. But I want you guys to understand that you're good enough, okay? Focus on, especially with generational wealth, I preach five keys. Your mindset. How do you think, okay? Take a little sheet of paper and put it in. I don't know if y'all remember in school, they used to make us put our put different subjects in a circle and then we had to like make little branches off that subject and write down different things, uh, different bullet points regarding that subject. So the first thing you can say is your mental or you can do an outline. What is my state of, what is my brainstorm? There you go. What is my state of mind today, right? Um, what trauma have I faced that I need to have healing from? 
What people do I need to forgive? What people do I resent? What situations have occurred in my life that I still haven't forgiven? Because if you still complain and whine and rap on about it, guys, you haven't let it go. It's still in your heart. It's dwelling too much. You're still speaking about it. And whatever you speak, you're still giving it life, right? So when I look at my mental state, how do I feel? I saw somebody drop in the chat box early that I'm grateful for the strength of uh, a strong mentality, right? So a strong mindset. So how do I think? Am I lazy? Am I a procrastinator? Do things easily bother me? Am I, do I have hatred? Do I have bitterness? Analyze the state of your mind, all right? Then the next one is emotions. How do I respond to people? Am I easily irritated? Do I respond? Do I get angry? Do I just jump at people right away? What is my level of response? I got somebody in my family, they just are literally a, a fireball for the smallest thing. I mean, it, it blows my mind at the things that they, they get angry by and they get violent. All right, I told them they need therapy. So what's your emotional state? Um, who, has, who has hurt your feelings in the past? Okay. Um, what in your childhood or what in your environments and workspaces and relationships, whether it's your friendships, your community, um, your spiritual environment, all right? Um, your family. Think about every single environment that you're in. What people don't you like to be around? What people trigger you? You got to really break down who you are, guys. Uh, when you think about your physical, all right, I've been saying I want to have my, my my short shorts and my little bit of top and at some point of this year because I got to focus more on getting my weight down and really being in my, for me, I just want to have a, a strong cardio, really want to be able to climb different mountains, go to national parks, continue to walk miles and miles and miles and enjoy life and create memories, all right? So what do you want your physical to look like? Don't say, uh, I, I, it's too late for me now. Drop down a couple of sizes. I want you to understand when you don't focus on the things that matter today, I promise you, you will pay the price in the future. OK, your weight may not you may not care about being overweight today. You may not care about you may be comfortable taking pills and stuff like that. And some things you, you, you're going to need it for. It. But why not go ahead and fix it now? Because problems always get worse. All right. Problems always get worse. It only lasts for so long. OK. Um, your financial state. How are you financially? Do you have a budget? What is your cost of living? You should know that number right off the top of your head. What is your income monthly? You should know that number off the top of your head. How much money do you have left over every single month? And what are you doing to allocate that money? What's your investment portfolio? Do you have a stock portfolio? Do you have a portfolio you're paying your dividends? Do you have a crypto portfolio? And also, do you have a, a staking portfolio that's paying you money either weekly or yearly? Do you have do you own any real estate? Like, do you have a business? Put your money somewhere where the, it's not, the value doesn't, the value may be volatile here and there, but the value over time will scale. Don't leave cash. Don't work on cash. Cash is nothing. Cash is dead. It's not king. The dollar sucks. It's weak. All right. So pick up a book, get on YouTube, get on TikTok. It's so much education all over the place that's teaching you whatever it is that you want to learn. All right. And so they said physical, mental, and last but not least, your spiritual state. What do you believe in, right? And whatever you believe in, how often do you spend time with your belief? I believe in God. I wake up every day. I read three pages of the Bible as often as I can. It's not seven days a week. It's probably about four or five days a week. All right, give myself that. Um, five, five days a week, at least on weekdays. Um, you know, three pages. Understanding what I believe in, not just going by what people say, not just going because I was raised in church. But ultimately, because God has provided for me from my own personal experience, I want to understand what he's done for the people. I want to understand that you take away what you can. All right. You don't have to go in a, a spiritual setting. Find a healthy setting. It may be just you in that personal time. You got to develop. A lot of times we want to give ourselves away to other people. We want these relationships. We want to be in love. Some of you guys may be in relationships. And guess what? It sucks. All right. That ain't everybody. And some of you guys have a healthy and amazing relationship is thriving, but don't walk around here being fake happy. Okay. Don't walk around here, fake thriving. Stop trying to put off of social media. You ain't got to do all that because at the end of the day, it's about your mental, spiritual, financial, physical, and emotional health. Get those things in order. Let's not procrastinate because procrastination builds an identity of never having a desire. It's another thing.
Procrastination will kill your desire. It would just, it would ring it out. You just keep ringing it out because every time you put something off, you're piling on procrastination on top of desire. You dig in the dirt, you dig yourself into a deeper hole. All right. So I hope this call gave you guys some perspective, some things to think about, some ways to understand that ultimately, no matter what we're going through, no matter the different goals and desires that we have, we are still good enough. We just have to make a decision to cultivate that desire, have a plan of action, and follow it until it's done. Time doesn't matter. The time on my watch doesn't dictate my belief. The time on my watch doesn't dictate my desire. The time on my watch doesn't dictate the plan. This does nothing for my goals. All right. If anything, um, it, it just it doesn't do anything for my goal. I can't even give it any credit. Time on the, uh, in this plane, in this physical plane, time does not contribute to my goals. And I hope you guys will get that. All right. It doesn't matter how long it takes because per time is a perspective. OK, all things will happen with enough consistency back behind it. You can achieve anything with consistency back behind it. All right. So who do you want to become, ladies and gentlemen? Be the best version of yourself. And it's going to take a lifetime to do that. All right. But understand you are good enough. Just get it done. Make a plan of action and don't count the days down. Don't count the time. Don't count the weeks. Just do it every day until you reap the benefits, okay? But I love you guys. I hope you got some value on tonight. And anybody that took some notes, somebody drop in the chat box for me. What is a hashtag that we can use from some value that you guys received tonight? Let's drop a hashtag in the Generational Wealth community chat. Out of all the information that we heard tonight, what's a hashtag that we can take away and just drop that in the chat box? Y'all let me know, let me know. I guess you're good enough. Is that can we use that tonight? Hashtag you're good enough. What y'all think? Yes or no? Or I am good enough. How about that? One for yes, two. Just I see you. I see you. Just be it's a double entendre right there. Just better. Just be better. Oh, no procrastination. That's such a big word. <laughs> all right we're gonna go with miss isis just be better guys go to the generational wealth community chat copy that just be better which is really a double entendre it's two words i mean one word it means two things and let's make it happen y'all have a blessed night i'll see y'all next tuesday you're good enough let's go